today we are going to start our discussion on modern physics. First thing let us try to understand what is light. In classical physics, light is treated as a wave because of diffraction, interference and polarization. In classical physics, electrons are treated as particles. Why? Because they have got charge and mass and they behave like particles in devices like television picture tubes. The wave nature of light was experimentally proved by Thomas Young in 1801. He showed that light undergoes interference. Interference is a property exhibited by waves. So based on this, people started believing that light is a wave. In 1887, one phenomenon was discovered by a scientist called Hirsch, after whom the unit of frequency is named. This phenomenon is photoelectric effect. This phenomenon was studied in detail and a lot of observations were made. The observations of photoelectric effect could not be explained by taking light as a wave. In 1905, Einstein took light as a particle and he explained the observations of photoelectric effect. For this he got the Nobel Prize in 1921. So now we have a problem. There are some phenomena like interference, diffraction and polarization that clearly tell us that light is a wave. And there are some other phenomena called photoelectric effect that tells us that light is a particle. So now we say light has got a dual nature. Sometimes it behaves like a particle and sometimes it behaves like a wave. This may sound artificial but actually it is not so artificial. You people behave in some manner in the classroom. Outside the classroom you behave in a totally different manner. So you've got a different nature inside the classroom, you've got a different nature outside. Same way light, in some situations it behaves like a particle, in some other situations it behaves like a wave. Same is true for electrons. Electrons also behave like particles and waves. People have done interference experiments with electrons which clearly show that electrons also have got a wave nature. So this wave particle duality is a general property. It is exhibited by electrons as well as light. The next thing we are going to understand is quantum mechanics. Suppose I give you one paisa every second for one hour. How much money will you have on the end of an hour? 36 rupees. Right? Suppose I give you 0.1 paisa every second for one hour. How much money will you have at the end of an hour? You may be tempted to say 3.6 rupees. Right? But that is not possible. Because I cannot give you 0.1 paisa. The minimum amount of currency that anyone can give you is only 1 paisa. Fractions of 1 paisa are not defined. So I cannot give you 0.1 paisa every second. So at the end of 1 hour, we will have nothing. So same way, certain quantities exist in certain minimum quantity or integer multiple of that quantity. They do not exist in fraction of that minimum quantity. Those quantities are said to be quantized. The minimum quantity associated with the quantity is called quantum of that quantity. The proof of quantum is quanta. So the quantum of currency is 1 paisa. 
Because anybody can either give you one paisa or integer multiple of one paisa. No one can give you a fraction of one paisa. Same way, a quantum of light wave of frequency f has energy E equal to hf. So a quantum of light wave of frequency f will have energy E equal to hf. Where h is Planck's constant. Planck's constant has a value of 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and is also equal to 4.136 into 10 to the power minus 15 electron volt second. Remember, electron volt is a unit of energy and one electron volt is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So quantum of light wave has energy given by E equal to HF where H is Planck's constant having a value of 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and that is equivalent to 4.136 into 10 to the power minus 15 electron volt second and one electron volt is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Now, frequency related to speed of light and wavelength. So, frequency is equal to C by lambda. So, we get E equal to HC by lambda. Well, lambda is the wavelength. Now, in appropriate units, this equation becomes E in electron volt is equal to 1242 by lambda in nanometer. So memorize this equation and also memorize this equation. Now a particle of light is called photon. Photon is a particle of light. Photons have got very special properties. The first property is photons travel at a speed of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second approximately. Okay, the exact value is 299-792-458 meter per second in vacuum. Now there are certain things very special about this speed. The first thing is nothing in the universe can travel faster than this speed. This is the upper limit of speed. Second special thing is this speed is true for any frame of reference. The speed of light in vacuum is always 299-792-458 meter per second. The second property of photon is rest mass of a photon is zero. In simple terms, rest mass is the mass that you study in classical mechanics. So rest mass of a photon is zero. Even though the rest mass is zero, each photon has a definite energy and linear momentum. During the collision of a photon with a material particle, both energy and momentum are conserved, but not the number of photons. Light is coming from that tube light and hitting my hand. In that process, some photons get absorbed and they vanish. So number of photons are not conserved, but energy and momentum are still conserved. Now the next property of photon, when we say intensity increases, The number of photons increase. But not the energy of each photon. 